Hi guys, this is Monica from Glassbird Bath Crafts. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to do a tutorial today um, and we're going to make tiny mini cakes and make them into ornaments for the tree. Um, thanks for joining me and let's get going. I'm just going to put this down here so you can see most of my work surface and and uh, hopefully this is doing, you can see well enough for us to continue. Okay, so my idea was to go ahead and take a pool noodle and cut it into small pieces. I just used, um, basically used a pair of scissors. Um, you could also use a utility knife if that works better for you. So I kind of cut them in the shape. Uh, this this doll, um, this uh, pool noodle came, came from Dollar Store, so it's a, a little bit smaller. So I wanted it to be a little bit taller than... Um, than it was around, okay? So the first thing we need to do is we need to do something about this hole that's in the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, um, we're gonna take a piece of cardboard or foam board. This is just an extra piece from a box and this one can be found at um, any of your craft stores or Dollar Tree or Walmart, okay? Usually runs about a buck. And this again, just scraps. So I'm gonna go ahead and work with this one um, only because I think it'll be easier for me to show you. Well, actually, no, that's not right. Let's go ahead and do it on this one so it'll be easier for you, for me to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so we're gonna take our little pool noodle and we're gonna place it down onto the foam board and we're gonna trace around and get our circle, okay? I do need to have two circles though because I need one for the top and for the bottom. So I'm just gonna do that one more time. Trace it around. So we have two. There we go. All right, let me set this aside for a sec. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. I know this is a little bit of a different kind of video. It's not a live, um, but I want to be able to share it to my YouTube channel, which is Glass Bird Bath Crafts. And I can't do that if I do it on a live for some reason. At least I don't think I can. I'm not real good at working with the phone and all of its magical um goodness uh, that I don't know <laughs> if I had a, if I had a young person around the house I probably would have no problem whatsoever but um, for me it's a little hard for me to figure out I try to look up YouTube videos on how to do this or how to do that and to be honest with you it's, it it's really been a challenge for me to figure out this end of it so like I said I'm just gonna do a um, a pre-recorded video for us and um, see how it goes. Doesn't mean I won't always do lives, I, I will, um, but this one, because it's a, um, um, it's gonna be a little bit longer, I wanted to go ahead and make sure that I had the video for sharing later on. So, anyways, so I hope everybody's doing good. Okay, I've got the top and the bottom here. Okay, of our little cake. Move that over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the hot glue and just glue it on to here, like so. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side. Now these are just gonna make, I mean, you could keep these as itty bitty tiny cakes and display them in your tear tray, or you could perhaps even hang one from a, um, ooh, a Christmas gift that you're giving someone. You could add a string to the top to make them ornaments, which is probably what we're gonna do. Um, haven't decided yet. Um, or you could just display it on a small, um, a small little pedestal that you might have or or a plate okay those are both glued on 
So for the outside here, I've got a couple different techniques that I'm going to show you. Um, the first one we're going to use, I'm going to go ahead and cover this with a piece of pink felt. Okay, everybody's kind of into the Candyland theme, so um, I'm going to play along. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and attach the felt to just this one spot. Make sure that you line up your edge over here, okay? And then I'm just going to run a couple beads. Well, actually, I'll probably just do the whole thing. Along here like so, and just continue to roll that on. Again, making sure that you're getting it um, lined up on this one side, like this, okay? All right. And continue on till you have it all the way covered. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and before I seal down that very last one, oops, let me get my good scissors. Remember I told you about my, my bad scissors for cutting cardboard and things? And these are my good ones for fabric and felt, I guess. Okay, cut that there. Oops, I cut it just a little too short. Oh, that was dumb. All right, there we go. We'll just move it on over just a little bit. Pull it a little bit tighter so we can get that. Don't make that mistake. Okay, let me just hold that for a second till it dries. Actually, I have another plan, so I think we will be able to cover up some of that too you about that in just a second so um, as most of you know and some of you don't uh, my husband and I just got done traveling across the country in our RV and we went um, spent a lot of time in Texas and uh, we were looking for property we'd love to live there and retire there in a couple years um, so we we, we went all over the place. We stayed uh, overnight down in Galveston. Um, we had an RV park that was literally right on the ocean. It had its, uh, actually, I think it's the Gulf. It had its own private beach, which was so cool. And um, we went and saw all the local sites. There's a really cool, amazing um, house there that was built um, I, I don't know if you guys know this or not, and I, I actually did not know it beforehand, so here's a history lesson. Um, back in 1903, there was a huge hurricane that came and wiped out Galveston. And um, one of the founding fathers, who had actually been the uh, the founder of the, the city that came there he actually sold off lots and made his money doing that and all these people built and and so when 1903 hit they had this horrible um devastating devastating hurricane that came through and a lot of the town was demolished except for this house and then just right across from the house was a church that they had built and that one had two towers still standing Okay, there we got that covered with the felt. All right, now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna make like sideways stripes on this. So I'm gonna decide on my width, which I think, um, oh, we'll do them about that big. I would say that's probably about a half an inch wide. And you could make them bigger or smaller depending on what you like. Um, I kind of like, I'm going to stay with a little bit smaller since it is a kind of a petite cake. So I don't know if any of you guys have been to Galveston, but I found this, the city to be absolutely, um, very, very interesting. Um, my husband loves history and I kind of enjoy it more now myself than I did in school, obviously. <laughs> And so it was very interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting this first little stripes on there. And 
we're just going to make stripes going down the side of this cake. So anyways, this house, back to this house, um, most of it was still standing. And so they did, they do tours now. Um, I guess the state of Texas owns the, owns the house. And um, it was just fascinating, absolutely fascinating um, to go through it. Uh, to see some of the original furnishings that were still there and also to see um, the, uh, the the structure, the way it was built. This house had, if you get a chance, look it up online. Um, and it has the, oh my gosh, the wood carvings and things in this house will blow your mind. So anyways, uh, we went all over Texas and usually um, my husband and I uh, like to go uh, motorcycle rides. He has a Harley. And so we made it a kind of a point in our journeys to go visit every single Harley shop that we could possibly get to. And um, of course we bought a souvenir. So now I have a closet full of um, t-shirts and other sparkly shirts and um and he has a whole collection of beer koozies and some pins and a few poker chips uh so we we ventured into the world's uh largest harley shop which is in el paso texas um we thought oh there's no way what and sure enough, it is indeed the biggest Harley Davidson store in the world. Um, this thing went on and on and on and on. And if you ever get in the chance to go there, if you're in the neighborhood and you like to get Harley merchandise, they have racks and racks and racks of clearance items. Um, and I don't know if it's just because they have an extra... Oh, you know, they buy more because they're a bigger store. But this, a lot of the items that I picked up there were the same items I was seeing at some of the other Harley shops, but they were selling them there for almost half price. <laughs> so I was very happy about that. And it looks like we got just one more stripe to go on here. But as fun as it was, and the weather was beautiful, and, and, uh, if you guys, uh, by the way, if anybody knows anybody that is selling property, we're looking for one to five acres um, and uh, utilities there would be great. Um, if not, we're not afraid to put in our own. Um, anyways, you can private message me or from my business page, which is glassbirdbathcrafts.com oh dot com what the heck am i saying I'm not paying attention um glassbirdbathcrafts.etsy is my facebook page sorry and then on youtube it will be glassbirdbathcrafts and on um uh yeah anyways that's how you find me okay so i've got our little cake started got little sparkly oh i forgot to show you what i was using for that before i started cutting it out I have, a I have one here that has a tag on it. Okay, so this is foam, sparkly foam. And this one is called Silly Winks. Silly Winks. And I got this at Hobby Lobby. And it comes available in a whole bunch of different colors. I've got red. Um, I've got the pink. I've got some purple here. One side is flat and then the other side is super, super sparkly. Okay, so that's what I use to make my stripes. And you could use, uh, you could use, um, uh, you could use felt. If you switch this around, you could even paint it, which we're going to do one like that too. I want to show you how to do that. Um, as a matter of fact, let's do that now while we're, I'm going to set this one aside while we're talking. I'll go ahead and show you a different way of making one. Again, we got our little pool noodle. And I'm going to try some, uh, I'm going to use some, Waverly chalk paint to paint this um, only because chalk paint you can use it on just about any surface and it will stick sometimes and I don't know about these pool noodles but I 
they, they kind of have a little bit of a shininess to them, so I'm not sure that just regular acrylic paint would stick to them. So um, no need to paint the ends. Of course, we're going to be covering those up. I'm going to give this a little coat of paint. And then we'll do some painting for the stripes so you guys can see that there's different ways to do this, but still come out with relatively close to the same effect. Okay, I'm painting with chalk paint. I'm gonna set that little guy aside. And start the next one. Okay, let's see. So traveling across the country was a lot of fun. Um, okay, let me see, which one do I wanna do next? Okay, I've got that one sitting over there, I've got this one. Let's try one that is done um, a little differently. Let's do, um, let's do one that's covered all the way in the purple. Everybody loves uh, Candyland for Christmas this year, I suppose, it's a big thing. And so um, I think that doing one in purple would be really, really cool. Okay, so this one I'm going to go ahead and wrap in the sparkly foam sheet and use that all the way across. Okay, and you do have to hold that for a minute because this one doesn't, the foam doesn't stick quite as quickly as the felt does. Oh, sorry, I'm out of camera. <laughs> there we go. All right. Just make sure that you're keeping it lined up on that one side right here so that you can get it on there straight. Okay. And I think what I'll do on this one, since I messed up the last one and cut it just a little bit short and kind of had to struggle with getting it, I think I'll go ahead and just overlap it all the way first. And then once it adheres, I'll go back and and cut off the excess. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold that for just a second. All right, so yes, traveling was absolutely a blast, but just like anything, any vacation, you gotta come home to get vacation, almost. Um, I was had my shop closed for a little bit, little bit during that time, um, tried to keep it open, but it just became a little bit too much, um, when my husband wanted to go and do stuff. So close it down for a couple weeks, but it is open that I'm open right now. I'm back. Um, and so I'm going to trim off the excess. Okay. So anyways, it's open. I'm back in business. Um, I did have a, a small little auction for all of my Halloween merchandise a couple days ago. And I just want you to to know that um, within the next couple days, I plan on going back onto my Etsy shop and I'm going to look at the Halloween merchandise that I have left over and I will be selling it at a discount um, so that I can get, get the merchandise sold and out of my RV. Um, many of you know, not everybody does, but many of you know that I do live in an RV full time um, we travel wherever my husband's job takes us. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. So, um, got a couple more years till he retires. Uh, again, I've got a couple of, ooh, not the good scissors. Got a couple of these um, already made into circles, and I'm just going to cut them out. Again, for the top and the bottom. So with uh, the fact that we travel a lot and we live in our RV full time, um, okay, put that on there. I just don't have a lot of room to store a lot of extra things. And so I love my crafting world. I love doing my fake bakes. Um, but when I get into doing larger pieces, which I really enjoy doing also, I end up, if I don't sell them right away, I, ha I end up with um, extras. And to be honest with you, for the first time in about five years, I have had to procure a, um, a storage unit. 
<laughs> a storage unit in the town that we're at currently. And um, we're looking to move again in a very short time, um, probably mid-December. And so I need to get my storage bin freed up. I need to empty some stuff and, and I have a lot of fake bakes and things like that um, that are being stored there. So um, I'm trying to, that's why I'm doing these minis right now. I'm trying to scale things down a little bit so that I can, um, it can be a little bit more manageable from the RV. Um, <laughs> but I don't know, I'm st I still, even, th even though I'm, I'll try to narrow it down, I know I'm still going to run out of space because I have a lot of craft supplies that I store. <laughs> Okay, there's that little guy. Um, I think, actually, now that I've covered that bottom, I think I might actually go ahead and cover this one on the top and the bottom with, or maybe just the top, I don't know, um, with the same sparkling foam. So I think that'll look pretty cool. Actually, you know what I need to do? This is, a, this is just my suggestion to you. Go ahead and glue your foam piece on first. Make sure that you get the glue around the edges here because that way you can trim it and you can cut it to size perfectly. Because you know how sometimes, like you can see with this circle down here, you know, even though I had measured it, it came out smaller for some reason when I cut it out. So, and I think I was starting to go that direction with this one too. So I just think for the, for the sake of trying to get things a little bit more even and making it a little easier, I think it's better just to um, glue it on first and then go ahead and uh, cut it around to make the shape um, perfectly fit around the, the little miniature cake. Okay. Alrighty. You can see a little bit where I started to cut it, and I was going to make it a little too small. So let me glue that back together. Okay. Now, don't worry about these edges right here because those will be covered. Um, we're going to put frosting on them to make them fake frosting, of course, uh, to make it look like a little cake. And I think. I think for the bottom, just because I want it to look more like a cake, I think on the bottom I'm going to go ahead and put, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put white under there because I want it to look like the cake is on a cake stand or a cake plate, right? And, hmm. I'm not sure. Well, we'll give it a shot. Hey, you know what? It's a, it's crafting. It's trial and error. Sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you don't. So we're going to give it a try. See if I can get one that will fit around there accurately. I probably should have left just a little bit of an edge around it so that I could pipe around the bottom. But we'll try it this way. And on the next one, I'll try it a little bit different from this. Okay, obviously this side's the dirty side with the pen marks and this side isn't, so we're gonna go ahead and put that on like that. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, I think in hindsight, I I would, um, I would maybe cut this a little bit larger because when I go to pipe the frosting around the edge, I think it would, um, it might look a little bit better, like it was sitting on a plate. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. And like I said, we're going to cover it in. All right, so there's our mini cake number one with the felt and the sparkly foam sheet. Now this one we have all covered in foam sheet. This one I painted white a little bit earlier. Um, I think it's probably gonna need another coat 
and I think it might still need to dry more before this one's ready to give it a second coat. So with that being said, we're going to move on to the next one. And for this one, I'm going to do, um, I've got just another plain piece of foam sheet here. Um, this could also be felt. I just didn't grab the felt out right now. Uh, I just happened to have this piece handy. So that's what we're going to go ahead and use. So again, I'm going to start here and start to apply this to this, um, to this little piece of, and this is just plain foam sheet. Uh, Walmart sells these, Hobby Lobby sells these. Um, you can get them pretty much anywhere. Okay. <laughs> My husband just walked by and he's trying to be funny. <laughs> Oh, that man makes me laugh. <laughs> Y'all got a funny husband. I hope you do. I hope you do because life is great when you have something to laugh at, even if it's at yourself. <laughs> oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Okay, so I'm kind of liking the way this one's working. Again, just like I did on the last one, as I learned from my mistakes, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it over this one and then cut it afterwards to make sure that I don't cut it too short. So we're gonna be holding that for just a second. I think, um, I think when you're covering it with this, this type of foam, uh, this one's just a little bit thicker than the sparkly one though. The sparkly's a little thinner. This is a little bit thicker, so it's a little, I think it'll work better, but um, I don't think that I'm gonna need to cut out the little circles to put on the end um, because I think I could just use a piece of this instead of having to do two steps. Put that first and then cover it with this. We're going to eliminate that. We're just going to go straight in and use the foam sheet to cover our top and our bottom. And the other thing I thought of is, and I'm going to do it with this one. Um, if you're going to be doing it as an ornament, um, we need to put a, an ornament hanger in one of these things. And, and you could do that a couple different ways, I suppose. You could probably, um, you know, get your little Christmas tree hooks or, which I think I might have some of those around when we look here. I do. Hang on, everybody. Hang on. They're a tangled mess, but I do have some. So I think you could go ahead and just uh, put in a couple of little holes and um, bring this back up. I'm going to try it. I hope I don't mess this up, guys. You have to make sure that they're small enough that they're still in that center, that center hole, right? Oh, that was dumb. Pick up the paint one. All right. And... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it back up through the hole. Just not talented enough to do that. We'll see. Let's try one more time here. See if I can get it up and going. Nope. Okay, I can't. So, because these ornaments aren't super heavy, um, I suppose what we could do is just go ahead down the center here like this, and we could just hot glue it into place. Again, don't worry about that top because I'm going to cover it. Okay. Now that I know what I'm going to do, I'm not going to... I'm Stop. Stop. I'm not going to use this right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and frost the top first and then stick this down through the frosting. And that way the speckle will dry around this. No problem. Okay. So back to this little guy that we're covering all the way with the white. I'm just cutting a little slant in there just so I can get my scissors in and get it started. I really miss talking to you guys doing a live. <laughs> I'm going to have to do that one next, but uh, anyways, I miss you. 
<laughs> Thanks for watching. Oh, goodness. So, how many of you guys have, uh, does anybody have Halloween plans? <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, Halloween used to be, well, it, it, it is one of my favorite times to decorate for and then to, I love to dress up. I love to play around with um, theatrical type makeup. So it's always been a fun one for me to be able to dress up. Um, I didn't always dress up and participate in Halloween. Um, when my kids were growing up, they kind of got chinsed out of it um, due to some different beliefs that we had. And, um, and then my daughter came along, my last one, and I wanted so bad to be able to dress her up for Halloween and go trick-or-treating with her, so... I, I told my ex-husband, you know what, <laughs> I'm dressing up my baby girl. She's going to dress up and I'm going to dress up and that's what we're doing. And, you know, I, I know there's maybe some deeper spiritual meanings some people believe, but um, I I just believe, you know, like I, I think that children should enjoy their childhood and parents should try to enjoy it with them when they can. And, um, and then again, of course, now with COVID and everything, um, you know, I don't know, last year, I don't think they had any kind of Halloween activities. And I think that this year they're going to have a lot of them. Um, I noticed even, you know, I'm here in California and I noticed even in my area, um, some of the local bars are actually having live bands and things like that. And, you know, they're not saying anything about masks being mandatory or, or vaccinations being mandatory, which I know that some of the larger um, musicians are requiring in order for you to attend their concerts. So, um, I don't know, you know, I, I, everybody has their own thoughts on it and, and um, it is what it is, but, um, okay. Hey, that looks pretty good. I like that. All right. Now we're just going to do another one for the other end. <laughs> you know, you notice I, I, I totally contradicted myself. First, I tell you to, with the purple one, I tell you to go ahead and glue it on first and then cut it to make sure that it's even. And then on this one, I didn't. I drew it around and then um, cut it out and then put it on. <laughs> so do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> okay. So I think, um, I do think I will though, um, because, I don't know, just because. Because I don't want you to get confused. So let's just stick with always put this on first and then trim it. That way you can get all the edges perfect. Like you can see around there, the edges are not perfect. Okay. That way we get just what we want. Okay. So while we were traveling, the husband and I were in our little truck and we um, we're pulling the RV along with this. It's the first time that we've actually done any traveling with the RV. Um, and we've had it for about five years now, I guess. Um, and we just, you know, because we live in it full time for his work, we go from one job site to the other. And most of all of it stays in California, uh, central to northern California. Um, he's been called up to, we worked up in, um, in the Oregon, Washington area once. And... So when this job finishes it up, we will also still be here in California. But um, so this is our first time that we took the RV with us and towed it all, all, the whole way. And okay, there we go. What do you guys think? Looks pretty good. Top, bottom, and wrapped. Let me take a peek at this painted one over here, see if that's ready for a second coat. Yep, I think we'll go ahead and do a second coat on this one real quick so that it can, the second coat can dry. And hopefully with any luck, I'll be able to finish up this, um, this particular painted one before y'all leave. And the video ends. So that way, you guys have a different technique, a different way of doing it. Like I said, if you don't have this, you know, if you have felt, great. If you don't have felt, that's fine too. If you have paint, you can do the paint. And if you have regular fabric, you could certainly cover your pool noodle with regular fabric. You could use decorative paper. If you have scrapbook paper or 
or stationery, or, or you could probably even, to be honest with you, you could even use a gift wrap, which is very affordable. Um, and make them any color that you want, any theme that you want, anything. And like I said, these don't have to, they wouldn't necessarily have to be just Christmas ornaments. You could set them out and have them be um, little, uh, just little displays on your tear tray. And you could have different colors and, and swap them out for all the different seasons um, and themes. So they're very versatile. You could use them for a lot, a lot, a lot of different things. Okay, so we got this little guy done. Oh, let me let me just rinse my fingers real quick. <laughs> Should have had a baby wipe ready. And no matter how hard you try, there's always going to be one thing you forget when you start your tutorials. <laughs> oh, okay. Alrighty, so we've got felt with sparkly foam, all sparkly foam. This one is regular foam. And I'm going to add some sparkly stripes to it with this red here. So it has kind of a candy cane theme. Alrighty. So again, I'm just going to start. I'm just going to cut myself about a, um, about a half an inch, I would say, piece of glitter foam. And like I said, at Hobby Lobby, you can buy these individually um, in whatever color that you like. I did notice that Walmart does sell some. They're not large though. This is an extremely large size. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the ones that they sell there are just the regular like eight by 10 size, like your computer paper. So they're a little bit smaller, but that's not a problem. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start here because I wanna try to cover up that seam, okay? just a little bit if I can. Okay, get it started and finish it down. Alrighty. Ooh, I think I'm gonna really like this one. My bad. I'm using the good scissors for, for foam. <laughs> I just need to put those away and get the other ones out. There we go. All right, so there's stripe number one. Make sure that your edges are all finished up here. And we're going to do stripe number two. So what do you all think about, has anybody been to Texas? I know a few people that have been there that have lived there and, and maybe still do live there. Um, I love, love, love Texas. Um, we do have uh, our retirement plans currently um, are to retire in Florida. And we've already purchased some property down there and done a little bit of work on it. And we're in the process of trying to get house plans and um, get in our septic and our sewer and water and all that stuff. Um, but... At the same time, um, I just love, love, love Texas. So, and my husband does too. He's a he's a cowboy. He well, he's kind of a little bit of everything. Um, but you know, he used to rodeo and ride and all that stuff. And so, um, he's one of those guys that has a has a cowboy hat and wears Wranglers and boots all the time. Alrighty, our last one here. And so Texas just really like would totally fit into his, his scheme of things. If you know what I mean, um, he would love to, you know, have a couple horses and, and, um, you know, um, a garden and, you know, I would love to have a garden. I'm, I'm not, I love crafting. That's kind of my thing. I always has been, I've crafted forever, but I, my mom had a green thumb that woman could grow anything and everything. And I can't believe that I fell that far from the tree that I can't grow something. But being from Washington, formerly from Washington. Okay. Hey, that's kind of cute. So on this one, we have candy stripes. And we did it with the white foam board, uh, foam, foam, foam sheet. And then the glittery red foam sheet. 
to make some stripes. I like that. That's looking pretty cool. All right, so, and for our last one that we're going to do, while that other painted one still dries, is we're going to do, um, I'm gonna take one, and I am going to actually cover this entirely with spackle. Um, for those of you that don't know, spackle is what us faith bakers use to, um, to make it look like we're using frosting. And this is the type of spackle that I like to use. And um, I do a lot of it, so I buy it in the big size. Sorry, there's a little bit of a glare there. But um, you get this on Amazon. I have not been able to find this in any of the local hardware stores. Um, and I love, love, love this brand. Um, because as you can see, when you open this up, I mean, it's just beautiful, beautiful white. Some of the other speckle brands can have a slight grayish tinge to them, in which case you have to add um, white acrylic paint to get it to be a more pure white color. Um, and with this one, I don't. And the other thing that I've noticed is that when I want to change color and, and make this into a colored frosting, um, it takes very, very, very little paint to do that. Um, so for today's project, I'm going to go ahead and make this, uh, I'm, this is going to be our white for our frosting, and I'm going to make quite a bit of it. Um, and when I say make, it's not because it's not already made. It is. I pretty much, but that's just a little bit too thick to get it through the pastry bag that I'm, that we're going to use. So, um, I'm going to actually add a little bit of water to it to thin it out just a little bit more. Um, I have tried this a million different ways. And if you try to get this shoved into a, if you take all the time and put it in, into a pastry bag and then you can't get it through the tip, it just makes you very, very unhappy. Um, <laughs> there's nothing worse than just getting ready and filling it all up and trying. And either you can't get it out at all, or when you go to squeeze it, it goes and makes a huge mess. So um, I've even had a bag blow out on me one time because the stuff, the speckle was too thick. So um, let me close this back up real quick and set that aside. Alrighty. So this one we're gonna keep um, white. It's already white, as you can see. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it and get it just a little bit better consistency. Just mix that in. You want to find just the right consistency, and this also is trial and error. I, it, it's, it's spackle, right? And so if you try it and you get it a little too watery, um, and it's just too thin, and when you go to squeeze it, it just runs all over the place or it doesn't hold up with any firmness, then you've added too much water. Um, in that case, you can add more spackle to it to thicken it back up, and or you can add um, cornstarch, which I've done both, and they all. But the, and I mean the cornstarch works fine. Um, so that's that's still a little bit too thick. There's absolutely no give to it. So I do add, need to add just a little bit more water. Oops! <laughs> oh, don't do that. Don't spill the water when you go to stir it. Okay, so that way I have a nice consistency. It's a little bit thinner, but when I go to scoop it up, it still stays. Okay, it's nice. It's got a texture, thin enough texture. I think it'll get through the the piping bag tip, and it's firm enough that it will hold up. I actually think I might even do just like a tiny couple drops more. Um, the tip that we're using, now this would probably be fine at this texture for a larger cake, if you're making a larger fake bake. Um, because we're working with these teeny tiny little cakes, I'm going to be making, uh, I'm going to be using a much smaller tip. And with the smaller tips, obviously it's hard to squeeze the the stuff that's too thick out. Um, with a larger tip, it comes out, you know, obviously you can do more, but 
Um, yeah, just a little bit extra water didn't hurt anything. Okay, alrighty. And so um, I'm gonna set this aside for just one second because I wanted to show you what we were gonna do with this last uh, little variety that we have here. So let me set that aside. Okay, so let's get this top glued on. Okay, and these are just little pieces of cardboard that I'd already pre-cut because I knew I was going to make a variety of these. Um, if you have a styrofoam cutter, um, which I do, um, you can also use that to cut these. Um, the downsides, the downside is, is that pool noodles melt really fast and really easy. So I didn't enjoy using it because it, it's almost like the the styrofoam just kind of dissolves around it and the, it gets, it's just, I, I didn't like it. It just didn't work well for me. So that's why I went back to just using um, my utility knife and my scissors. Um, I've even seen people just use like a little hand saw to saw them. I, I haven't tried that one, so I don't know how smooth it would leave the end results, but um, depending on what you're using the pool noodles for, but for these, I think just a little bit smoother edge is better. Okay, got both those ends glued on. And we are going to, I have a couple of other um, speckles already mixed up. One of these is chocolate, basically just speckle with brown paint. And I made a huge, huge amount, and I'll tell you why. It was a mistake. <laughs> I needed just a little bit of chocolate and I kept adding more and more paint and more and more paint. And the more paint I added, the thinner it got because paint is obviously sort of a liquid. And so it just got my, I, I kept adding more spackle. And before I knew it, I had a whole bowl full of this stuff and didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> but, um, and then I also have this one over here, which is kind of a like pretty mint green. Um, I think... Oh, I think I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to go ahead and use the chocolate. Um, again, your imagination is is not limited. Whatever color of paints that you can find that you want to make your frosting that color, you just go right ahead and do that. Um, the with this particular brand of speckle, the just a regular ordinary red uh apple barrel this is apple barrel but it comes in other brands too but just a regular red acrylic paint seems to work just fine however there's also um you can get an acrylic paint that's in a tube and you'll find that in the uh where the artist um supplies are and that one for some reason is more high high highly pigmented and when you use that one it um it colors it really fast and it gives it a really deep true red without having to use as much acrylic paint. Okay, so here's our last cake. Here's what we're gonna do. Now, on the bottom, I'm gonna probably add, matter of fact, let's do that now. I'm gonna add a little piece of styrofoam, or foam sheet, I should say. And on this one, I'm gonna try to, see, I didn't even have to put that on there. Um, I'm gonna leave it so it's a little bit wider so it looks more like a cake board or a cake plate. And um, unfortunately, I've tried and tried and tried and tried to find like ready-made items that are circular like this that would be the right size for something like this. And I have not been able to find one, um, anything, anywhere. So <laughs> it's kind of... Uh, I've been forced to just kind of make my own stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this, but leave it with a little bit of an edge. That way I can frost it and add some piping um, around the edges and have it sit on top of the edge of this little bottom so it looks more like it's sitting on a plate. And I think it'll just look kind of cute just because it's something different. And I wanted to teach you guys lots of different ways to be able to make this. Um, because your creativity should not be limited. If one way doesn't work for you, then try another way and just keep on trying. Um, 
if crafting is something that you're interested in. Now, if you don't like crafting and you would prefer purchasing your crafts, please visit my Etsy shop. <laughs> because uh, I have lots of these little guys available ready-made and you don't even have to make them isn't that nice of me <laughs> anyways oh um before I forget please like and follow me I am trying really hard to build my business and it's I'm fairly new but I'm committed to I'm gonna try really really hard I'm, uh, to do um several tutorials a week um some of them will probably be live. Some of them will probably be pre-recorded, which this one is. Um, but I would just love it if you'd come back and visit again. I have lots of plans, lots of ideas, and and uh, I'd love to get creative with you. Okay, so we're going to take our little frosting, and we are just simply going to frost our pool noodle. And I'm just using a simple little wooden popsicle stick. Um... You could use something different if you wanted. I have a cake, actual cake frosting knife, but um, for something this small, I think just this little guy or even just a regular size popsicle stick would work just fine. Make sure that you put enough on that you can, that you're not gonna see the pool noodle underneath. I just wanna make sure I got that plenty thick. And as far as how this frosting lays, to dry um, you could pretty much do whatever you want I mean a lot of people will frost a cake and it'll just be kind of like this and it'll be kind of messy and there's nothing wrong with that um, some people like to do more of a um, like a swirl kind of a look you could do that um, or you can do something that goes up like this and makes it look a little bit smoother that direction Again, just make sure that you are not taking off so much that you leave any of the pool noodle showing. So you want that to be covered. This is probably one of my favorite ways just because it's easy and um, it's kind of foolproof. If you're just, if you're new to fake baking, um, you know, there's obviously nothing fancy about it, but it's pretty easy to do, All right? Okay, I'm gonna set this down and we need to frost the top. This can be a little bit tricky. You're gonna have to get your fingers dirty. Make sure you get it down here around the edges. Okay, they don't, whoops, uh oh, shoot. <laughs> Salvage, save, crash and burn. Okay, there we go. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to pipe some frosting around the edges here. So most of this will be covered and you won't even see it. The edges, I mean, so they don't have to be perfect. Okay. I'm going to do this one more time. Just to kind of get a little bit of the excess off around the edges. Okay. All right, guys, we have our little cake frosted. Whoa! Uh-oh. Shoot. Oh, man. It's such a small surface. That's why putting maybe even just a little bit larger base on this one would have maybe been good. All right, but no problems, no worries. All right. That's the beauty of this stuff. It's flexible enough that you can, you know, you can make a little boo-boo and you can fix it back up. Just like Bob Ross says, all we have is just happy little mistakes. <laughs> I think that's what he said anyways. Now I'm showing my age. There's some people that probably don't know, have a clue who Bob Ross is. Okay, there's a little cake. So this would normally... Um, it can be done two different ways. Um, if I have the time and I'm not in a hurry, I would prefer to let this dry as is until tomorrow and then go back in and add my piping. Um, but 
you don't have to. You can add your secondary piping right away, which is what we're going to do. Um, the other thing that um, I wanted to show you is that if you do make your base a little bit larger, um, you're going to want to make sure that you know you try to keep it clean so you can see some of the white. I'm not worried about this one because we are going to be putting the piping around it. Um, and we may, I may end up having to repaint the bottom side too. I think I got a little bit on there. So probably maybe a baby wipe would take that off, but I forgot that. I'm going to rinse my fingers again, guys. I'll be right back. It's a nice thing about doing your crafting at your kitchen counter. <laughs> your sink is relatively close. Oh, I think I'm liking that little chocolate cake. It's so cute. Okay, now we're back to our, let me push that up aside, back to our white spackle. So here's where we're going to load it into our piping bag. Now, piping bags um, come in a variety of different sizes. They come in different brands. You can buy them at Walmart, Amazon, Hobby Lobby. Um, and I just recently found these at the Dollar Tree, um, 12 of them for a dollar. They're maybe not like super thick or anything like that, but a lot of times when you're working with um, something small like this, you want to have something that is, you can just keep, a. Um, it's a little bit more usable by keeping a smaller amount in it instead of having a big piping bag. And so for those, I think this would work just fine. Um, as long as you just were using, you know, something doing it with with a lightweight speckle that's kind of on the thinner side I don't think you'll have to worry about a blowout but I was pretty excited about that find I thought that was pretty cool okay so I have a piping bag this one happens to be um one that I rinsed out and uh you buy the tips here at Hobby Lobby or Walmart this tip is a number 21 and this tip is a number 32. This bag is a pastry bag that's more of a fabric type material. So I think it's a little bit more durable as far as long-term investment. Um, they do obviously cost a little bit more than the plastic bags, but, um, but I like these too. And they wash out really easily as well, uh, with the exception of because this paint has, uh, the speckle has paint in it, um, it kind of stained it with the paint, but um, doesn't, keep it from not working well. So we'll, st I'm going to leave this one, um, maybe for, uh, I'm trying to decide. Um, I was going to maybe use some of the chocolate too, but I don't think so. I think I'm going to do everything in white. Okay. Just because it's so simple. Okay. As you can see, as this has sat us a little bit, it's gotten just a little bit thicker. And to me, that texture if it doesn't have any movement, um, is too dry. I'm never going to get that through my piping tip, especially a small one like this. So I'm going to need to add just a little bit more water and stir it in so I can get this a little bit more pliable. So anybody doing anything for this Halloween? Anybody got any parties going on? Or are you guys going to dress up? Do you guys have a favorite costume? Let me know in the comments. Tell me what you're doing. And what costume you're dressing up in. Okay. Yep, that feels about right. See, if I give it a shake, it'll come off. But it doesn't, it's not runny. Okay, so I like to pull back the pastry bag. And kind of turn it on inside of itself. Okay. And you can put this into a cup to make it easier to fill if you like. Put your edges over there. Like so. Oh, that didn't work very well, did it? I pulled it right back up. Let's try it one more time. And then um, 
I like to use my wooden um, popsicle stick because I can get it way down there into the bottom. And I don't have to work at it too hard. You guys would not believe how much that looks like real chocolate frosting right now. It makes me hungry. I want to I want to eat chocolate cupcakes. <laughs> Y'all feel like eating chocolate cupcakes too? Unbelievable. Okay. Set that aside and put a lid on it. It's still a little bit in there and I don't want it to dry out. Also, if you have a situation like this, I'm just going to give you one quick little tip. Um, it's always best if you can take the excess and try to scrape it all into one area. Even though you have this lid on, the spackle will tend to get dried out. So it's always better if you can try to get as much of it into one pile as possible because you'll go to see that when you go to open it back up, all the stuff that's up here high will have um, gotten s stiff and it'll be hard. And then you don't want to get the hard stuff in with the nice stuff um, because it can get stuck in your tip for one. And for two, it leaves chunks of s uh, dried stuff when you go to frost it. Okay, so that's what I like to do. I just like to keep it all kind of centralized into one spot as much as possible. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect. Um, your other alternative, especially if you're using white like this, is you could just go ahead and uh, put it back into the canister that it came with, that it came in. Okay, but you know what? I like to recycle my Kentucky Fried Chicken Bowls. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's put that over there. Okay. All right. So now we've got this going on, and we're just going to shake it down into the bottom of our, of our frosting bag. Try to get it down there. Squeeze it down there. Squeezing out the air. This is another good tip if you just lay it down. And it's kind of funny. Um, some of the tip bags have like fill to here uh, lines that it, that it tells you what to do. And it actually does work better if you can keep, maybe do a smaller amount as opposed to a larger amount. Just for me, because I can keep a little bit better grip on it and I can get a little more of a delicate um, look from, oh, from my frosting. Okay, so there we go. That's what's going to happen. So again, this is the shape. This is the 21 tip. I hope you like it. All right, let's get this little cake up here. Okay, so I'm going to take my little frosting thing and I'm just going to squeeze. See, this is maybe just a little bit too thick still because I'm having to squeeze whoop, kind of hard in order to get the frosting on the bottom. It's not really, I didn't really want it quite that big, but um, yeah, it'll still work. Okay. Yeah, why could I have this a little bit thinner? I don't like having to push really hard and I wind up with these humongous giant dollops of frosting. Okay. be able to get underneath it. I should have took that first. There we go. Okay. So that's how the bottom piping. Okay. And then I'm going to do some piping on the top here too. Hopefully I can get this one where it doesn't turn out quite so blobby. Apparently not. And it takes a lot of practice, guys, with these to get them, you know, to be consistent with the way they look and have them all turn out identical. It just does. You know, I've been doing this for a while. I'm not by any means a professional 
cake decorator or baker, but, um, but you know, it's just a matter of, of just trying it and just keep doing it. And like I said, a lot of it may, has to do with the texture of your, your frosting. Okay. So, this, like I said, this one's probably a little bit thicker than I want it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I would have liked this um, to be just a little bit more delicate, but it is what it is now. Um, if you absolutely hate it at this point, you can wipe it off and try again. It, this is where it being the bottom part being dry already uh, sometimes can be better because then you can just scrape this off of dry speckle and it's not hard to do at all. Um, I do want to add, I think, some little sprinkles to this little guy. Maybe something right in the center of the top. And since Christmas is just right around the corner, I'm going to go ahead and dig into my Christmas stash. And I've got a few of these larger ones. Those are cute. Um, oh, I also have like a cherry on top. Oh, I like the cherry. That's kind of cute. Um, I have a smaller one here. That's kind of cute. That size of a... Yeah, you know what? I, I think that might be it. Um, and I also have some little sprinkles here. You want to put your sprinkles on while your cake is still wet or your spackle is still wet. Um, and sometimes even at that, they're just gonna fall off in a roll. Um, these ones happen to be like little, I don't know how you describe them. They're like little, you find, I found these at the dollar store and they're little, um, like little plastic things that have a hole in them. They're sold in the glitter, like craft aisle glitter stuff. So I think it's kind of a, some sort of a type of glitter. And I have just realized that I did not put this on my little um, twirly cake carousel or lazy Susan, as they used to call it. So I can't really turn it around to get to this other side. So I'm just gonna have to kind of shoot them over there and hope that they land and they stick. Yeah, this one's surely not my most perfect one, but um, hey, that's okay. This one will go right on my tree. And I'm not picky, I don't mind. You can have a little bit of, little bit of larger speckling and you know, that kind of stuff. Okay, and I also have the same thing also in green. And again, I got these at the at the dollar store. They, they're in the craft aisle. I, I want to say they're with the glitter. I don't know what they call them other than that. I guess you would use them for glitter. So if any of you guys started doing your Christmas decorating yet... I have not. I just, I need Halloween to be finished before I do that. I just, I just do. Um, I love my, I love my stuff and I don't want to put it away yet. And it's not like we have a ton of visitors over here in the old RV park, but, um, I do it because I like the way it looks. So I do it for me. I do it for myself. I decorate because I like it. It makes me happy. So Christmas will be here soon enough. And as far as decorating for Thanksgiving, I don't really do anything like that as far as turkey-ish. <laughs> um, I'll put out some, I'll keep out some of my fall. Um, and then I usually decorate, start decorating for Christmas um, around the 1st of December. Or sometimes the day right after Thanksgiving because I'm bored and I don't have anything else to do. 
Um, not a big thing for us. I mean, my husband and I, um, we are down here by ourselves. All of our children are either in Washington or Oregon. So when we can, we will go up there and visit. And when we can't, we won't. Yep, that one's too small. All righty. Uh, what about this one? Nope. I think I like this one the best. Maybe that's too big. No, you know what? I don't think it is. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little bit of, um, I'm just going to add a little dollop here. I'll probably end up covering up the whole top. Watch this. I'll try, but <laughs> I think it's too thick. Yeah, that worked all right, I suppose. Yeah, might as well just cover up the top now. One of those decision-making times. <laughs> On the spot decision making got to make those got to make those decisions sometimes too okay alrighty and now we're going to place this right into the top of this just like that and it should dry like that with that little piece of peppermint candy in there okay bear with me i'm going to get a spatula Oh, that's a big giant barbecue spatula. Where's my little cookie spatula? There it is. Okay. So I'm going to take this and lift this up as best I could and hope, hope that it doesn't fall. All right. Okay. And I'm actually going to set this behind me on the counter because I don't want to bump it. And on some parchment paper. If you happen to have parchment paper, that's good for it too. Alrighty, there we go. We got a, we got one that's done. Okay. Okay. So that's your one idea. Just use the frosting and frost it that way and decorate it however you want to. And as you can see, you could do that for any theme. Um, you could do it for absolutely anything. It doesn't have to be for Christmas. You can do it for whatever. Um, okay, so let's get back to these little guys over here. So now that I have uh, experienced the speckle and it's still a bit too thick, I'm going to... I hate to do it, but I'm going to because I'm going to. Um, I'm going to squish it all out. And I'm going to add a little bit more water to it to get it just a little bit thinner. It's still just a little too thick, and I'd like to have, see if I could get a little bit more of a neat and tidy little, little, um, speckle swirl. Oh, there we go. Forgot what to do with it. <laughs> it was right there. Okay. I might have added just a smidge too much. I might have to put a little bit more speckle in here. Let's check it out when I go to lift it up. Nope. That will work. Yep. I think that's good. Okay. Back into the speckle bag you go. I mean, <laughs> speckle bag. <laughs> Pastry bag. Back in the pastry bag, my spackle will go. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, how many of you decorate before Thanksgiving for Christmas, or do you wait until afterwards? Ooh. Comment. Leave a comment in the comment section so I can, uh, so I can... I can chat with you back. And I will take the time, I promise, to look at all your comments and try to respond to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, I love to teach and help others to learn. Okay. Now, don't forget that in the very front of this tip that I didn't quite get emptied out all the way is a little bit of the older frosting that we just used that's a little thicker. So I'm going to take and give it a little squeeze, there we go, and get that out of there first 
before I start to move on. Okay, which one shall we do? Um, I think I'm going to do the red candy cane stripe one. Okay. Um, let me get my parchment paper over here. Alrighty. And I'm just going to frost this one right here on top of this. Okay. So I'm going to pick up and I'm just going to start by putting my little... Start to put my little decorative scallops or whatever you call this around here. Oh yeah, that's much better. Still coming out a little bit big, but much better. Oh! <laughs> and that's what happens when you don't hang on to it. Oh, look, it's all over on the table. I don't know if you can see that. There it is, right there. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Alrighty, let's try this again. <laughs> see, if we, see if we can hang on to it this time. Hang on to it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Alright. <laughs> well, if nothing else, it gave me another opportunity to practice my piping. <laughs> right? Right. Hey, you always got to look for the positive. Alrighty, and we have the top done. And actually, that was going to be the bottom, huh? That's going to have to be the top now. I should have made it a little bit differently, um, the direction. So I'm just going to put this down here. I'm going to move this little guy over just a little bit more that direction so he's not in the way. and pipe along the bottom here. I know y'all can't see me probably from the angle right now. I'll try to go around and come to where you can see. But basically we're doing the same thing that we just did on the chocolate cake. Just a little bit easier because I thinned down that speckle just a little bit more. And you will know right away if you have gotten, if the speckle is too thick, or if it's too thin and just make your adjustments whatever it is that you need to do to make your adjustments just do it it's not a big deal oopsie got kind of big all right I'm go back around this side i got him a little bit larger on that back side so i'm trying to put a little bit more in the front to even them out There's that. And on this one, I think I'm gonna put a pretty little rosette on the top and then put our um, other decorations into it. So that's pretty easy. You're just gonna take and swirl it around like so. And I know that's just a smidge tall, but once I put the uh, candy in top, on top of it, uh, or cherry, no, nope, I think it would be candy. I think it'll be fine. So I've got that one. Oh, we've got that one. I think I like this one. Although we have already used these. Um, I've got a couple, I've got a couple of these little guys in here too. How many people like gingies? Gingerbreads. Yeah, he's pretty cute. Yeah, I think I'll keep it. I think I'll keep this one gingerbread themed. Just I just pick up this little stuff like, you know, you can... He's awful cute on there. Um, you can find it. Oh, I think I like him. Guys, I think I'm going to make the little snowman. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add another little dollop to this so it looks like a snowman body. What do you think? <laughs> hey, the old credit create now. If I can just get it to be a small enough circle. Not bad. Ooh. 
Yeah, that'll work. Okay. And I'm going to put this little guy on top of here so he looks like a snowman. Ha! Huh. What do you think? Is he cute or what? I like it. That's cute. I might even have to get some black wire and make some little snowman arms. Wouldn't that be adorable? Um, I have some I have some wire in here, but got little green things on the end of it. So we don't want to do that. But I will find some little wire and I will make some little snowman arms for him. Okay. <clears throat> now we've got two left. And basically we are going to be doing exactly the same thing. Um, just frosting around the edges with our spackle. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. I might have to make up some more because there's maybe not quite enough to do these. Okie dokie. Actually, you know what? I think maybe on one, maybe I won't speckle around the bottom. I'm not sure yet. I'm not super, super good with the piping bag yet. Um, I know there are some people out there that can make some really pretty little swirls and, you know, stuff like that. I'm just not very good at it yet. So I'm trying. I'm trying to learn. And like I said, you know, it is what it is. I think, remember I had those holes in there, so I think I'm going to go ahead and just fill this in. And that'll give that hanger a little bit more to hang onto because there'll be more spackle on top. Okay, there's that one. And I think as far as, I don't I don't know that I'm gonna speckle around the bottom on this one. I think I'm gonna leave it this way, and then maybe um, maybe add uh, another little white styrofoam, uh, a white foam board that's a little bit larger, and then maybe use some sort of a decorative ribbon or string or something. Um, and then for the top, we are going to put some sprinkles, and I've got some sprinkles right here. And goodness, you could do any kind you want to. I just happen to have, um, I've got some pink ones here. And these are, um, these are base filler. They're available at Dollar Tree and your craft stores. Um, they are made out of styrofoam and they are very, very elasticity. <laughs> In other words, um, they stick to anything and everything. So, Try not to spill them if you can. <laughs> I've actually dumped an entire bag of these one time. Oi, oi, oi. And there's nothing really you can do. I mean, even trying to sweep them, they run away from you. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but they run away from you when you try to sweep them. And so, um, I just, I don't know. I just sweep them up and get rid of them. My floors are not clean enough to eat off of, so... Um, when I drop something on them, I'm not going to pick it back up because it might have other things in it. I have, i am always got a craft going, so there's usually some sort of glitter, um, maybe, you know, some little slivers of styrofoam or, you know, foam board. And I have two cats and um, they are very, very sweet little animals, but they do get hair on the floor sometimes. Okay, there's our pink ones. Um, let me see. I have purple. I have pink. I have white. I have um, green. I have multicolor. Um, oh, I think I'm going to do the green. I kind of like the way that looks from here. So I'll pull out a few of these green ones. 
those on here. Oh, you can see the spackle starting to get a little bit dry. Um, so they don't want to stick quite as easily. So sometimes you have to place them on there by hand, which is not a big deal. Um, you can use just use use it like this where you pick up your fingers or you can even do it where um, you use a pair of twizzer, tweezers. And I have been known to use a pair of tweezers on more than one occasion to get my little decorative pieces on top of my cake or my cupcake. Yeah, that's looking kind of cute. Now, um, before we go any further, I just realized that I forgot to put some sprinkles on this guy. Oh, and I forgot glitter. Most important thing, glitter, glitter. Everything has to have glitter. Okay, so I've got some glitter here. This is just a extra fine glitter. I picked this up at Walmart for just a few dollars. Take a screenshot if you'd like and take so I can take that with you. And I'm just gonna do some glitter around here. And usually I will put my, I'll do my glitter over top of a paper plate. Um, but because I've already got these on the parchment paper and they're kind of already starting to dry, I don't wanna move them too much. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, I love the glitter on there. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And I have, um, this is just the, you know, the clear, fine, whatever, white. And I love this one because you can use it on absolutely everything. Um, but I also have all kinds of other glitter. Like I have a purple one and a red one and a blue one. So I've got lots of lots of different colors. And I even have somewhere around here, I have another one that's pink. Oh, there it is. Let me grab that real quick. And I have this one. This is so pretty. And this one I think I got it. Um mm, Joanne Fabrics. Put a few of those on there. Ooh, that's pretty. Can you guys see that one? Doesn't that just sparkle? I am gonna put a little bit of this on there too, because I like I like my cakes to sparkle, especially if I'm gonna make this into a into a um, ornament for a tree. Okay. Now, this one I didn't put anything on. I'm trying to decide. Maybe I'll put just a smidge of glitter on it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like too much of the red glitter on it. Uh, pull that back into the screen so you guys can see that one. That's our little, oh yeah, that looks good. Just a teeny tiny little sprinkle of the red glitter. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, and if you're ever just not sure, like when you're going to add a color or something like this, um, just put a little bit in your hand and that way you can sprinkle it on lightly and hopefully you decide that you like it. If you don't, however, the world is not going to end. You can, especially in this case, because these are not frosted like this one is, um, you could just take and scrape all this stuff off and throw it away or start over um, depending, you know, if you've got red glitter and you don't like it obviously you wouldn't want to keep it just toss it get rid of it okay I do think I need to put something on top of this little cake though uh, and also there's snow you could use snow I've got a few I picked up these little guys here they are uh, little snowflakes and they're I bought them in the sequence aisle at Joanne Fabrics and they're meant to Back in the day, they used to put pins in these, like little pearl head pins, and they would make ornaments and stuff with them that way. I just picked them up to put, you know, in with my stuff, and gosh, I really like these. So I'm going to add a couple of these snowflakes. They do stick together, so it's kind of hard to tell them apart sometimes. That one, I think, is more than one because it feels thick. I'm just put a couple snowflakes on here. Guys, I'm gonna have to wash my hands here in a second. I can't take it anymore. 
Okay, it's got some pretty little, pretty little snowflakes. Those are cute. And we'll put one more up here in the top. Like that. Oh, that's cute. I like it. And then I think just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and take and glue a few of these onto the side of our little cake, our miniature cake. Pretty. I'm going to, I'm going to, guys, I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way before I bump them. I just don't want to take any chances. And these other two, I don't think I'll be doing anything on the bottom of them. So I don't have to worry about the, um, the parchment paper. Okay. Good. All right. I can't believe I forgot to bring out the baby wipes. Okay. So back to what we were doing. So you could just do these, um, you know, you could, I don't know, let me see. Do I want them to go all in a straight line around it or do I want them to be more random? I think I want them to be more random. I'm just going to take and put these little guys on here. Just as I go. And you can decorate these things however you want. Like I said, if you are having... Um, you, you want to put a little gingerbread, you want to have a, uh, a shark, um, let's see, Baby Yoda. Um, you could make these little cakes for literally any occasion, any occasion at all. Super easy, super fun, super cute. And once this one dries, I'm going to go ahead and put like a little decorative bottom on it. Um, I still think it's missing something. So let's see. I have some little baby candy canes. Oh, so you guys. So remember I told you that, you know, we traveled and we got, got back very shortly ago. And so I'm one of those girls that can never have her hands. Um, I always have to be busy. Always have to be doing something with my hands. So while we were traveling, I took the opportunity, I'll be right back guys, I'm gonna try to get a little bit of paint off my fingers, to work with clay. Now I'm not a clay, you know, professional master, master clay maker, <laughs> but um, I like to play, you know, and since we were traveling anyways, I, I put my little, um, my little cutting board in front of me and my little clay on the floor in front of me. And when the cats weren't fighting for attention and wanting to sit on my lap, I would make things from clay. And I figured, you know, I've got the holidays coming up and I'm gonna, I've am gonna, i got some ideas like these for some, some different things. And so um, I thought, well, I'll do some playing. Well, guys, this is the result of me doing playing. I have a box full of fun little clay. I have macarons. I have donuts. I have lollipops and swirlies. I think I'm actually going to put that on the cake. I think that's really cute. Um, I, I made a few of these cookies that I haven't worked decorated yet. Um, these little guys now, aren't those beautiful? <laughs> They're big and they're so cool. I haven't put the stick in yet, but those are gonna be pretty lollipops and some more with different colors. I made a couple cookies. I made an, some itty bitty miniature little donuts. Um, I have some gingerbread uh, cookie decorations. I'm gonna kind of jazz up and make some little cakes with those too. And I think those little donuts will be just adorable. And that one's kind of cute too. It's got all the different colors. Hmm. Yep, that's got more of the right color green. And I made some candy canes and holy cow. <laughs> I made all kinds of stuff while we were driving. And like I said, in between the cats wanting to uh, be on my lap. 
Um, if I had that little, um, oh, that's kind of cute too. I made a little ball. Um, if I if I had these already frosted, I probably would um, put one of those on there. Actually, you know what? Hmm. Next time, next video. This one's getting kind of long. I'll show you how to decorate these little guys. All the all the donut type things. Okay, but for now, I'm thinking I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I do really kind of like the way this looks. So I think I might take out that that snowflake and maybe just tuck this right here into the top. Pretty cute. I could even glue a snowflake to it. Oh, I actually kind of like that idea. I'm going to do that. We'll just glue a little snowflake up here. And once this stuff dries, once your speckle dries, guys, um, you'll have no problem with these little things sticking in there. Um, if they do, you can, one of them comes loose or something, you can, um, like there's a chance because this one's kind of top heavy that it might loosen up before the spackle dries and sticks it in there. I just use a little super glue and put it back in there and just glue it on. I'm not quite finished with this one. I think I'm going to put, um, I have these little stickers that came from the Dollar Tree. And I also have these little sticky gems over here. And I'm kind of thinking that I might want to jazz that up and put some of those little stickers in the middle. Ooh, or maybe I'll just use those, um, these little blue beads. What do you guys think? Write, write, write to me in your comments and let me know what your thoughts are. And, uh, and maybe I'll make another one of these and, and we'll try it a different way. Okay. So I'm just going to put a couple of those little beads in here. these guys all come in they're usually pretty consistent but sometimes they come in different sizes oh, I'm liking that so try to make sure that you kind of keep your sizes all the same when it comes to these little balls yep that is perfect I absolutely love it I love it Oh, it's so cute. One more up here in this little guy. Oh, got two of them. Okay, there's that. That's pretty cute. All right. So now we'll set that aside and we have just one more to go. The little purple one that we were going to decorate in a different way. So on this one, I'm going to show you um, real quick. I'm going to do some, I don't, I think I will have to do a little uh, decorating around the bottom here because it didn't, uh, didn't uh, sit, sit real well on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, a little bit more spackle back in here, guys. Bear with me. It's really hard to judge how much speckle that you're going to need when you're working with certain, with things. But um, that's why I just keep these little disposable bowls around and just, you know, put the, leave the extra in there. Uh, as long as it's sealed up really good, it, they're generally fine. And if they get a little bit dried out, like you saw me do earlier, you can just simply add a little water to it to thin them out and make them a little bit a better consistency. Okay. I do miss talking to you guys. I miss my lives. I'm going to say hi one more time. Hi. <laughs> the good thing about this, though, is you can't see me wear my glasses <laughs> while I'm working on these. <sighs> okay. Just a little bit more spackle here so that we can get this last little cake finished up. This one I think I'm going to make. Um, this is going to be fun. I think I'm going to do something really different. Nope, it's still a little too thick. This is one of those things that you just have to, you just have to kind of perfect it. 
you know, as you go, it's every batch is different. There's no set formula as to how much speckle, how much water or anything like that. You just kind of have to do it to the right consistency. Um, and like I said before, I like it to be, you know, that looks about right where it sticks to the sticks to it. But if I go to shake it, it falls off. So it's a good texture. Another little tip for you, um, I've tried to, when I have extra in my piping bags, I've tried to keep them, uh, the spackle in them, and keep them ready for the next time I do another fake bake. Well, let me tell you what happens. I am not a very consistent person. I'm very sporadic and I like lots and lots of different crafts and so I'll go through a an extended amount of time where I'm wanting to fake bake like non-stop and then I'll have times when um, I don't want to fake bake I might want to you know do something floral or make a wreath or you know something like that I, I like a lot of different things um, so the longer, even though I tell myself I'm gonna do that tomorrow, I usually don't. And so the longer that the frosting sits in these little things, the harder it gets for them to it to come out of the tip because it does get dry. Um, no matter whether I wrap something around it or not, it still gets dried out. And it, and like like I sh like I showed you from the beginning when I had to re remix this, is that it's really easy to get it too thick, and if it's too dry, it just won't come out. And it's just not fun for anybody. So I found it, I'll squeeze as much as I can back into the bucket and what I can't get back into the bucket, I just simply wash it, wash it away. Yep, I just wash it away and um, start fresh next time. Clean my tip, clean my bag. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and do this one. Um, I'm going to try really hard to make these small. I hope I can do it. I don't want a big, big giant bottom, but I do need to, I do need to kind of cover that. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to try. Oh, see, I just can't. I just. <laughs> That's what happens when you have air <laughs> in your piping. <laughs> a bag. Uh, now that one didn't go far but um i did get a little on me here but um yeah so you do want to kind of try to get the air out and i did try to do it but uh I, apparently i missed it i missed a I missed a hole that's okay like i said as you, as you can see i just wiped it back off and and there we go again we're just gonna start over uh, i don't like that i want it to be thinner Maybe I do have that other tip that's, I think, oh, come on, might be a little bit smaller. I'm not sure. I feel another air bubble coming on. I don't like the, <laughs> the looks of that. Maybe we'll get lucky. And we'll get all the way through it without the air bubble. I wish I was one of those professional cake decorators. Holy cow. I wish I was better at that, but, but hey, you know what? That's not bad. That's not bad. Let me go ahead and do um, my glitter on here while I've got it and it's wet. Okay. And now for the top. Um, hmm. I think, ooh, I didn't realize that was gonna, it almost pulled some of the frosting off. I think I'll have to bring back my, well, no, that's okay. Maybe if I stick it in the plastic. 
it'll work. Okay, I'll just put that on that plastic. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, I think because of the way this edge turned out, I'm afraid I might just have to do the little things all the way around it. I don't think that I can skip that part. I was going to try to just do a rosette for you guys, just like a few of them right around the top, um, sitting on the top, but I just can't do it. This one is going to need the frosting all the way around. Gosh, isn't this purple glitter paper so pretty? Okay, so there's that. And I'm gonna show you, like I said, I'm gonna show you a little different technique. This time I'm gonna show you a different way to decorate this. Okay, so we got that. Um, let's go ahead. I don't have that little gingerbread girl, where is she? And she's got purple cheeks on her. Um, We'll go ahead and use her. So I'm going to put some of our fake frosting into the center here. And I'm going to put our little, um, give me just a minute to put her in. There was something that I wanted to show you. Um, so I wanted to decorate this one a little bit and make it a little bit fancy around the edges. So I've got these pretty little jewels here and these are Dollar Tree as well. And they have sticky stuff on the back of them. But even though they have the sticky stuff, I would still recommend that you put just a little dot of glue on them. So I'm going to put a little dot of glue here. And I'm going to add this around our little cake. Right in the middle. Okay, like so. Okay. Ooh, doesn't that sparkle pretty? And I'm going to add um, a couple more, probably not that many, and then comes the fun part. How I connect it all and make it look like it's supposed to be that way. Okay. I'm going to put one on the opposite side. Again, right in the middle. Okay. And two more. I don't think I can get much more than that on there because they're kind of good sized. But again, I'm going to space these out so it's one, two, three, four. debating about that gingerbread girl. I'm not so sure I want her up there. Um, hmm. Yeah, she's pretty cute. I'm going to put her on there. And when you're doing this, make sure that you uh, are putting her in the front, not where the seam is that's in the back. Okay. Mm, let's put that little guy right there. Okay. All right. Here's how that looks so far. Now I have also some puffy 3D puffy paint. Um, these come in small containers and they also come in the bulkier size. You can find these at any craft store. Um, this one is from Walmart, but Hobby Lobby sells them. Um, sometimes you can pick up the little puffy paints at the dollar store for the little tiny containers of it. And that's a pretty good deal. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit challenging because I've already speckled. I probably, I don't know. I don't know which was the best way to do this, but I don't know if you guys can see or not. But I'm just going to do a little line. 
connecting the two. So it looks like it's a little, hopefully you guys can see that. Connecting the two spaces between the two charms. Like that. stuff hanging oh see I'm gonna have to add just a little bit of glue um, this is one of those situations like I was telling you before that she started to move a little bit before the speckle completely dried so she um, I don't like this one right here Hang, that's gonna come off um, she started to dry before the speckle was set I'm sorry she started to move before the speckle was set and so, uh, consequently, she started to fall over the minute I started moving the, the cupcake or the cake. So, I'm going to take her off. And I will repipe a little thing in the middle when I'm done at the very end so that it's not moving around. Okay? Sound good? All right. I thought so. Okay, so, um, and you could decorate these any way that you want to using the puffy paint you can do all kinds of fun things on here i don't know if i can get you to see this or not but um i think i'll do a couple little dots here yeah i don't know if you guys can see I'll just put some where is it there it is some little dots up above it and i'll do that to the rest of these as well just three little dots. Try not to make sure that you don't use too much though. Um, again, at this point you've got gravity going against you. Um, but you know, it's pretty much the only way that you can do it. Um, if you were to make these with styrofoam, I suppose you could poke a hole in them and put a, put a skewer and um, hold them up and then do some different things. But um, since I wanted to use the pool noodle and show you how to do it that way and make something really cute and inexpensive because you could use those pool noodles a million times over, um, I just wanted you to see it with using something else. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's put that little, let's put our last little bit of spackle back on. <laughs> oh goodness gracious what did I do with it oh there it is okay. okay now that I officially know that I am done with the sides oh it looks like be careful when you use your stuff that it doesn't get too thick because it will run that one's starting to run a little bit I hope it doesn't run all the way down I got it just a little bit too thick Okay. Okay, the rest of them look like it may, might be okay. Plus, if I put a little bit of glitter. Okay. All right. Put this rosette back in the middle. And put our little gingerbread girl. Sorry guys, I got too much, it squirted out too fast and that's not what I wanted it to look like. But see how easy it is to remove it? Just pick it up and move it where you want it. I still wanna be able to see a little bit of the, the purple underneath and that's probably where I'm going wrong just because this is so much of a smaller little circle. My little gingerbread girl's not wanting to stay up. Again. There we go. Another way you could do her, I'm not sure because it's in the center, 
but you could possibly put a maybe two uh, little toothpicks on either side and then stick it down into the pool noodle because it's kind of a styrofoaming material. The only reason I'm not going to do that right now is because it's sitting more towards the center and if I put one in, it's just going to go through that hole. But if you're planning on doing the little thing, I would suggest before you put her on, you have your toothpicks on and then use one of these. Uh, it's called a dowel. I just got this in the sewing section at Walmart. And pre-poke a couple holes because don't forget, on top of that pool noodle, you have... Uh, a layer of either cardboard or the foam board. So it's gonna be a little harder to punch through it. So you almost need to have a little something to help start it and then add some glue to your toothpicks and then pop them in and then it should stay just fine. Okay, I'm gonna spin her around here and see if I like the idea of putting some of these little snowflakes on and I do, I do, I do. I'm gonna put a couple of these little snowflakes on here. I think they're really cute. And do I have any more? Okay. Because I think these are super cute. And we're almost done, guys. Thanks for sticking in there with me. Okay, all right, and there's our last one. So I've showed you all kinds of different ways. I'm gonna place this on the counter behind me and then I'll take the phone and, and uh, go over there so you can take a look. Please pay no attention to the mess that I have on the counter. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see here. Okay. Hello. All right. So we have. Oh, where is it? There we go. So we have our cute little purple cake with our gingerbread girl. She's falling again already. I am going to have to put something there, I think. And then we have this one with our. This is the one with the felt, and we put that little handmade on it. And then we've got the Mr. Snowman over here. Let me spin him around so you guys can see him. Okay, there's that one with this lollipop. Oop, there we go. That's the one we frosted with the chocolate frosting. And there's our last one, which is our little snowman. Okay. So guys, that's it for today. <laughs> I know that was a little bit of a long tutorial. Um, hopefully I didn't lose anybody and I hope I kept you interested enough. I don't know if I really, I didn't talk a lot, but um, I did at least um, show you about four different ways to do little miniature cakes using a pool noodle. So uh, thank you for being here with me. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope to see you back again next time. Don't forget to push that like button and share and also um, follow and subscribe. That would be wonderful. All right, guys. Thank you. I love you guys. See you next time. Bye.